Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sunnah alhamdulillah wa sallam wa sallam wa sallam wa sallam wa sallam So one of the people that we had spoken about in the uh, in that last halaqa, subhanAllah, that, that I had um, where I didn't realize that we were going to have a shutdown, we spoke about people that passed away in the Amwas plague. Uh, so if you go back and you look up that video about the plague that killed um, you know, many of the Sahaba and how we can take lessons from them, uh, one of the people we spoke about was Mu'adh bin Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And so I want to actually mention this narration in the context of that understanding who he is and what happened to him, that he was one of those who passed away and whose entire family had perished uh, in the plague of Amwas. Uh, Abu Dris al-Khawlani, he says that I entered the masjid in Damascus. Remember, Mu'adh was in the area of Asham. So he said, I entered into the masjid in Damascus and I saw that there was a young man with a beautiful smile and pearly white teeth sitting with some people. So he described Mu'ad as a young man, by the way. So as we, as we mentioned that Halaqa Mu'ad who died in his 30s, uh, but had a long resume of things that he accomplished with the Prophet Sallallahu So he said, I noticed this man that was sitting with a big smile and, and, and white teeth. And when the people disagreed about something, they related it back to him. And clearly he was the authority amongst them. And the Prophet Sallallahu of course had mentioned this man uh, with his scholarly authority. So he said, I, I started to ask people about him. Who is this young man? And they said, this is Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So he said that the next day I went into the masjid and I saw that he got to the dhuhr prayer. He preceded me to the dhuhr prayer, the noon prayer before me. And so I found him praying and I went and I sat next to him and waited for him to finish his prayer. And then as he finished his prayer, I greeted him and I told him, by Allah, I love you for the sake of Allah. By Allah, I love you for the sake of Allah. And Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, By Allah, wallahi, you swear, by the Lord, he said, by Allah. He said, then glad tidings to you. He said, he took me by the upper part of my cloak and he told me to rejoice. He embraced me and he said to rejoice because the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet of Allah, peace be upon him, the last thing he told Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu was that I love you. And he told, he gave him the, the glad tidings or he gave him the dua to say at the end of every prayer, uh, Allahumma inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa hasni ibadatik. But anyway, so he told him, um, Abshir, he said, glad tidings to you because I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say that Allah has said, wajabat mahabbati lil mutahabina fi, that my love has been mandated for those who love each other for my sake. And so this was, something that was given to Mu'adh radiallahu anhu, and I mixed up Mu'adh with Mus'ab for a moment, but this was something that was given to Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu in a very special way. So anyway, um, uh, with Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu, a man who the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told him as he was bidding him farewell to Yemen that I love you for the sake of Allah, and gave him something to take with him. And now you have years later, a generation after, and Mu'adh sitting in the masjid, and clearly demonstrating a sense of righteousness and authority amongst the people. And Abu Idris saying that I love you for Allah just because he recognized the love of the righteous for him. And Mu'adh telling him that the Prophet ﷺ said that there's something special about two people that love each other for the sake of their Lord. So I want to speak about this concept for a moment, inshallah ta'ala, in a different way. It's not just that there's a blessing in loving one another for the sake of God. But it's also the sunnah to express that, to actually say to a person that you love them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is another hadith that Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu says. He says, I was sitting with the Prophet, peace be upon him, and a man came passing by. And he said, O Prophet of Allah, indeed I love this man. So the Prophet sallallahu said, did you tell him that you love him? And he said, no. So he said, get up and go tell him. So he got up and he went and told him, Oh, so and so, indeed, by Allah, I love you for the sake of Allah. And the man responded, May the one whom you loved me for love you back. So the Prophet ﷺ actually prompted him to go to him and tell him, I love you for Allah. Don't leave him guessing. Don't just leave that in your heart. Actually go express that to him and say, Uhibbuka fillah, I love you for the sake of Allah. And the man responded, Ahabbaka ladhi ahbabtani fi, May the one whom you have loved me for love you back. Now, if we take a step back with the Prophet Sallallahu uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, taught this 
in a society of people where showing affection like that was not something that was the norm, right? So there's a, you know, there's there's a, a an incident where the Prophet Sallallahu was uh, kissing his his grandkids, Al Hassan wal Hussein And uh, one of the men, one of the men uh, saw that and he said, "I have ten of them, and I, I've never kissed any of them." You know, so it was it was weird to have someone kissing some kissing their kids, right? Because it just wasn't society, that wasn't their culture. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is hugging his kids and kissing them. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, what can I do with a man who doesn't have mercy uh, in his heart? So this was a society where affection in, in the public space was in, in that sense, right? I'm not talking about affection in an obscene sense. I'm talking about expressing pure halal, sunnah, uh, you know, affection uh, was something that was, you know, w- was considered weird. It was considered off. And here the Prophet Sallallahu is prompting the man. He's saying, go tell that man that you love him for the sake of Allah. And the Prophet Sallallahu as he dispatched Mu'adh radiallahu anhu, told him, Oh Mu'adh, I love you, right? Just know that I love you, right? Actually saying that to him, telling him, I love you. So the sunnah is not just to love someone for the sake of Allah and love them for the sake of God alone because of their righteousness and what bonds you of the pursuit of righteousness, but to actually go to someone and to express that, to actually say it and to not let it be an awkward thing. And we mentioned this about Mu'adh. Can you imagine Mu'adh, the man to whom the Prophet said that to? The man who narrated that to another man who told him that he loved him. And how many people, Mu'adh, in that era where he died from the plague, right? And his family died from the plague. How many people Mu'adh must have told, I love you for the sake of Allah, right? He didn't leave people guessing. And that's not how we're supposed to be. There's this idea that your actions speak louder than words, and indeed actions do speak louder than words. But just like there is shukur, there's gratitude that we show to Allah with our actions, there's also alhamdulillah, there's also expressing gratitude, right? And expressing your love for your brother or for your sister for the sake of Allah is a means of expressing that gratitude, right? And a means of bonding people in a way that is greater. And if that's what the Prophet Sallallahu taught us to say with people that are uh, outside of our home, then what then of those that are inside of our home, right? You know, is it if, if the Prophet ﷺ created this culture where people would say that to each other, that I love you for the sake of Allah, how many times do you think the Prophet ﷺ said, I love you to Aisha radiallahu anha? How many times do you think he said that to Al-Hassan, Al-Hussein, Fatima, and Ali? How many times do you think he said that to the people in his own household? How much more should we then be saying that to our parents, to our spouses, to our children, to those that are closest to us? Because any good character that we display outside of the home should be enhanced and intensified inside the home, right? With the people that are closest to us. And right now, when a pandemic is going around uncertainty, it's even, it's even more important for us to constantly express that and to show people that we love them, to say to people that we love them, the people that mean something to us. Don't wait for people to die. Don't wait for people to be dying. Don't wait for someone to be in a hospital bed. Uh, say it to someone, right? And in fact, it's a sunnah. Again, if you're thinking of someone that you know, um, that you love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's someone that uh, you've you've pursued righteousness together, call them, send them a text message. Say, hey, listen, I just want you to know I love you for the sake of Allah. Uh, say that to, your, to, 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 to people that you work with for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Make it a habit, and I speak to myself first. Let's make it a habit, inshallah ta'ala, to do that. Now, this is to say in the in the generality sense, so when uh, someone says to a group, I love you all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because truly, I love you all for the sake of Allah, because I'm inspired by you, and every time I see you know comments of people who are saying, Jazakallah khair, this was beneficial, and it reached me at this time, uh, then this is an opportunity for us to do khair with one another. So I love you all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then no funny business, all right? So this is for brothers to brothers, sister to sisters, all right? Don't don't start reaching out to people randomly. Don't don't slide into anyone's DMs and say, I love you, uh, that you're not supposed to be saying that to, all right? No funny business. This is brothers to brothers, sisters to sisters. This is the type of uh, I love you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we should be applying with each other, inshallah ta'ala. So with that being said, please do understand it to be a sunnah, uh, something that is a part of our faith to express that. Don't leave people guessing. Express it to the people that are closest to you frequently. Express it to those that are um, that are within your circle that you pursue righteousness with. Let it be a thing that bonds you closer to someone, that builds that relationship closer. 
and let it be frequent, right? Don't don't let it be something that's just uh, you know always left in the background. Don't make it awkward, right? It is I love you for the sake of Allah, and constantly say that to one another. And uh, you know, right now someone could probably really, really, really use that. So uh, reach out to someone, inshallah Taala, and just tell them, hey, I just want you to know I love you for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Jazakumullah uh, khairan. Tomorrow is the day of Friday. I'll see you all at 2 p.m. Eastern, inshallah, uh, for the virtual khutbah, which is not a real Jum'ah, but uh, I hope you'll tune in, inshallah ta'ala, as well as tomorrow night. Uh, next Wednesday, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to be having a Ramadan prep webinar, so look out for information uh, on that as well. And uh, there will be plenty of other opportunities to engage. So Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.